Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. As promised, I was going to have one last one produced today, Sunday, for you here. Uh, this is be the last one for this particular series, so I should have some more coming out um, probably within two or three weeks or so, so be on the lookout for those. And thank you as always for your suggestions. So if you didn't see yours picked this time around, then by all means don't worry, um, there will be plenty of more videos produced in the near future. And anytime that happens, I always go back and look at past particular suggestions and see if anything stands out among them, then I'll pick them then. So by all means, um, thank you as always for your continued support on here. And the reason why I picked this particular cryptid is because of the very good response that everyone gave with my last uh, video, the one that I was talking about, the Green Children of Woolpit. It seemed to strike a good nerve with everybody. Um, I guess everybody liked the almost fairy tale like uh, substance associated with those cryptids, i.e. those children on there. And so I picked this one because not only has it been recommended several times in the past over several videos, but it, uh, l in looking at the information on there, I realized um, it was very similar to the Green Children of Woolpit. And so I wanted to end this particular note with this uh, with this series because thank you as always for your suggestions and for the warm reception on the last one. So I thought it would be a good way to end it here. And the one I'm talking about here, the set of cryptids I'm talking about for this video are none other than the Moon-Eyed People of North Carolina. If you haven't heard them, I haven't heard of them either on there. Um, the only time I heard of them was when they were in their past suggestions. But in looking at the information on them here, wow, they've been around for a very, very long time. Depending on the research that you've done, whether um, it's been seen one on one page or seen on another, uh, it, it, they go back as far back as either 500 B.C., or 500 AD so either way that is a very long time I'm trying to recall if there have been any other cryptids older than these um, I'm sure there are you know others that are a long long time before them but at least with regards to eyewitness accounts these tend to be I believe some of the oldest one out there so it'll be interesting to see again um, with these particular cryptids if we ever have any current tales associated with them because everything I came across one of the unfortunate things related to these cryptids as old as they are you know hundreds of years in this case centuries and centuries and centuries back there's very little evidence of them and even then no photographic evidence no audio evidence, let alone no video evidence. Everything just seems to come down as a more of a tale handed down over the centuries and disseminated information from there. So whoever these cryptids are, um, they made an impact. And if they're still around today, they're doing a very, very, very good job of staying hidden on there. So, so who are the Moon-Eyed People of North Carolina? Well, they were a race of people that lived in an area that would today be North Carolina, but again, it would be so far back. We're talking again 500 either BC or 500 AD. This was at a time when in that area, it was populated by Native Americans, and they are actually the ones that describe these cryptids over generations they're the ones that produce the tales associated with these cryptids and they're the ones that we have the information from today on there it's kinda like the tall tales that I've talked about from the cryptids from the lumberjacks in the past uh, very similar comparison but instead of lumberjacks here in this case we have Native Americans that have them and basically they're this they were a race of people that had some very distinct features on them the reason why they're called the Moon-Eyed People is because of their most distinct feature, which was their eyes. Their eyes are the ones that had the most single, strongest attribute of them all. They've been described as being not white, but being very, very bright, uh, like almost diamond-like. They had a very soft glow to them. Um, the first thing that I thought of as a comparison was if anyone has ever seen any of the uh, Riddick movies, whether it was the last one Riddick or any of the other ones like Pitch Black or Chronicles of Riddick, every time that he took off those goggles, uh, those miner's goggles from his eyes and it, the film showcased what his eyes looked like, that's what I was instantly reminded of and I used that 
as a comparison here. So their eyes were this way because apparently they were very sensitive to the sun. They could not stay out in the sun for too long on there because of their eyes. Uh, same way like Riddick was in the movies. Anytime a light was shined on them, they were blinded by that light, instantaneously blinded. Conversely, those eyes, if they were in the dark, um, any, and, and they were, let's say, with a normal person, they could see far better than any normal person would in the dark, probably as well as Riddick did in the movies, where they could see um, almost in the dark as if it were day on that part. So that was one noticeable attribute, their most noticeable one of all. The second one was that apparently they were heavily bearded. I know that sounded strange, but that's how the um, Indians, again, described them, specifically the Cherokee Indians. They were heavily bearded. And then the third feature was they had perfectly white skin. So no doubt, all those three features, again, having diamond-like eyes, uh, heavy beards, and then perfectly white skin, stood in stark contrast to any of the other Native Americans that were in and around that area. And so there would have been a very key set of features that uh, if the Indians saw these people coming around in that area, uh, they would have known that they were 100% complete strangers and nobody from any of the other tribes on there. Now regarding those eyes, again, um, because of the nature of those eyes, those people, whoever they were, they lived in that area, but they still lived apparently above ground. And I'll talk about that in a later bit because um, it has to do with some of their only physical remnants of these people. And um, it's very interesting because there's a... Uh, physical structure that's still tied to them but I'll talk about that here in a little bit so now the tale associated with the moon-eyed people and how they came to be um, unfortunately there's not much info on that but as far as where they went I do have some info on that part the tale goes that um, all of a sudden these moon-eyed people were there in and around that area and naturally because the Native Americans were already there in particular the Cherokee Indians um, they became uh, uh, there became a, uh, a war of some sort and whatever this war was whoever caused it whoever started it why it was fought I don't know again that information is so so hidden or so mysterious it's kinda like this um, you know how you have that tale where you could give information to one person in one ear but they hand it to another person in another ear and then by the time you get to the 50th person that information is so disseminated that it's completely different than it was from it where it began well imagine that but instead of having just a, you know several people imagine hundreds of, of centuries and then you'll have an idea of how this information is so mysterious if it all just came from one group of people in this case the Native Americans there and the only thing they to chronicle these moon-eyed people the tales associated with them was word uh, passed down from generation to generation that's why the information remains so remains so mysterious so again how this war started um, who caused it um, who was in it in terms of names nobody knows on that part but the end result was that this great war the moon-eyed people lost big time and the way that they lost it was so humbling that not only did they not live above ground anymore but they actually went into underground caverns and have apparently stayed there since then and again I mentioned earlier after so many hundreds of years if these moon eyed people are still around that area they have done a very very good job of staying hidden because even with today's technology um, even with uh, so many other people living in that area now nobody has been able to come across them today and be able to describe them even people who are probably tried to hunt them tried to see if they could purposely find these moon eyed people nobody has been able to find them as of yet no physical evidence nothing along those lines on there now also those moon eyed people um, the the way that they lost the battle before this battle happened before this great war happened they apparently lived above ground as I just mentioned a couple minutes back and this is very interesting because the only physical remnants of these people and whatever race they were came not from like physical evidence of themselves but physical evidence of their living quarters and what I'm talking about is this in and around that area there's a place called Fort Mountain and the reason why it's called Fort Mountain is because there's an 850 foot long stone wall that's still there today 
that people say is related to these moon-eyed people. So how cool is that? Um, if you have a race of people, as I've talked about in past Cryptids and Monsters videos, um, a lot of times there's just the tall tales associated with them, no physical evidence. Here, we actually have them physical evidence of their race through this whatever this 800 foot long stone wall was it's there today because of them and you'll see pictures of it here um, this wall varies in height from about two to six feet in some cases even higher but it wraps around like a stone wall would of let's say of a colony and in this case you'll see an aerial picture of a reconstruction of it where you'll see how this stone wall, if it were here today, then it would actually look like uh, a stone wall would of any kind of colony that's trying to create borders to protect either stuff outside going in or vice versa on there. And in fact, again, you'll see another picture of it here, which includes a modern day reconstruction of what that area would have looked like. So again this is all very preliminary stuff I don't know how this modern day reconstruction would have come about with the limited information we have on these people but whoever reconstructed this image here uh, apparently used the stone wall as it exists today and came up with this image so that's how by all considerations uh, the race of people's living areas would have looked like if it was not destroyed, if it was still up to standard, if it was still existing today, that's how it would look like on there. And this stone wall has been predated to be, again, somewhere around 500 B.C. So, again, um, that's how the, the smart is made on how old these particular race of people are because the stone wall itself and how it was built has been dated to that time period. Not only that... But again, Cherokee legend has it that the wall was built by these people, and that's where they used to live before this great uh, war started on there. And after, again, this great war and these uh, Cher and then these Moonad people went to live in the caves, um, there have been tales even associated since then that some of them came out and have actually descended into... I guess you could call it uh, lineage or heritage with some of the other people there. In other words, they created a sort of genealogy where some of the people there created families with some of the Indians and then some of the settlers afterwards and it just disseminated there. While other stories are that these um, uh, moon eyed people essentially just stayed within the caves and remained there as of today. They apparently have a, like a whole society living underneath the underground and they just live there. They've done such a good job that wherever people live now today in North Carolina or in and around that area, um, they have no clue that these people would be living underneath them, whole societies living underneath them of these moon eyed people where modern civilization is above ground today. So. Um, again, there are also some other tales associated with uh, these Moon Eye people potentially being supernatural or maybe even being um, associated with UFOs like the Greys or the Aliens. And that's how people get the description of them having the, um, the glassy-eyed, diamond-like eyes or pupils was because that's how aliens sometimes have their eyes or have been described as having their eyes. But in other places, uh, on a more realistic setting... Uh, the most common description of these Moon Eye people are that they are none other than Vikings or early settlers that were here in America far before anybody such as Christopher Columbus or anybody else came across and discovered this new world. And the tales associated with those are that um, the settlers, whoever they were, whenever they came by and again this would have happened hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before Christopher Columbus well they would have come in and they would have been looking like let's say as much as foreigners are to the Indians and vice versa that's how they would have looked to the Indians themselves here the Indians are they have you know darker skins they have certain attributes to them certain looks in terms of their hair and then here are these pale, white-skinned um, settlers coming over. And in some cases, they probably had, let's say, 
those bright blue eyes and seeing them for the first time in comparison with, let's say, your average, like at the time, then Indian, said, um, Indian natives who would have had darker pupils on their eyes, well, it would have seemed like something like it was completely foreign. So their description of them being with glassy eyes or diamond-like eyes, Again, it could have been something as simple as these were early settlers who had looked so foreign to them because there would have been nobody else looking like them before um, before they arrived because everyone else would have just looked like your average Native American on there. So those are the more realistic explanations associated with these Moon-Eyed people. But again, there's there are other more fantastical explanations ranging from the supernatural to UFOs to uh, just a race of people that lived there and looked just like that but then that was the only time that they lived above ground so so what do you guys think the moon-eyed people of north carolina does anybody have any more common tales associated with them any more current tales hopefully um i you know i tried to see if there was anything anything at all that's within even this past century, this past thousand years, but no, there haven't been anything uh, with regards to these people, whoever they are, wherever they are now, if they are even still alive, whoever these cryptids are. Um, again, they've done such a good job of staying hidden, so I don't know, I, there's no information on where they could be right now, but if anybody has anything related to it, experiences, friends, family members, anybody in the past that perhaps ran into them, or has uh, been able to find them, then please, you know, share your thoughts, post them below, it'd be fascinating to see if anybody has more info on there. I wish that I could have come across more tales, more encounters. Uh, more experiences to go over with them uh, for you but with regards to these moon eyed people they are very hidden and have remained very hidden so nothing really much to talk about other than what, than what I just described on here so as always thank you for your continued support and watching these videos and I will promise I'll have more out soon uh, look for the, any future series probably within about maybe two weeks at most so alright everybody thanks again as always take care